we're measuring tools and techniques and devices so that we can uh, get the kind of picture that we want, learn these techniques so that we can build skill in observational drawing. So observational perceptual drawing, again, so it's like figuring out what you observe, what you perceive, and translating it to the surface based on what you see in front of you. Um, considering the context of the drawing and then also the variable of your own person, your own viewpoint, your own eye level. Um, when we're in class, if you're taking the class with me versus if you're taking the class with Seth Vanderings, who's a lot taller than me, or Jeff Cameron, who's a lot taller than me, uh, sometimes I have to stand on my tiptoes to get to your eye level. Sometimes I have to squat down to get to your eye level. I'm like kind of a little below our type for a woman, and so my, that's how I see the world, through my eye level, and everything that I do is sort of revolves around that, right? It's the same for you. So accuracy in my drawing is gonna be different than accuracy in your drawing based on your eye level, because all the measurements and the proportions, not the proportions so much, but all the measurements of the angles are gonna change. So my tabletop is gonna look different than yours. If I change my association to what I see here, um, I see more of the tabletop from here because of the convention of perspective, right? So um, I'm right down on top of it, it's, it's over here. As I back up in space, the perspective of the tabletop changes. So depending on your eye level and your relationship to what you're drawing, things are gonna change, which is why we want you to be standing because then you can think about taking this posture, okay? Your, things aren't going to change by depending on what seat you get. And I know I've said this before, but it's really important. That's part of the reason we want to stand. And then also it allows us to fully employ all of our techniques where we need an extended elbow and a stretched out arm and so on. And then we can, again, do these, these kind of pivot measurements where we, we take a look at something and, and compare. Okay, so I've got my boxes sort of mapped out here. If I had to build custom boxes for these objects, I would know about what the size they were. All right, and part of that I get from looking through my viewfinder and seeing how much space they take up in my viewfinder. So we talked about this box being kind of a quarter of my viewfinder and thus a quarter of this page, a roundabout. And again, I'm placing the bottom of my viewfinder on this front corner because that front corner is not gonna change unless somebody bumps this table. The top of the bottle is just slightly cut off like what I see through my viewfinder cuts this sort of band of the bottle off. But there is actually a little bit more space up here. So I'm thinking I might need to move this down a bit. And you see how when I move that down, it affects this. So this is what I mean. We don't wanna to get too specific about anything before we know really what's going on. And that's why we're gonna take care and measure. So I'm gonna measure this bottle and we're gonna talk about um, <clears throat> the technique that we refer to as uh, site measuring and comparative measuring. So I'm gonna measure the widest part of the bottle, which is this bottle, the character of it, it slips in just ever so slightly as it goes down to the ground. You get to know these objects because they're all in our still life uh, sort of supply. I've been looking at this bottle for a lot of years, so I'm gonna measure the thickest part of that, the widest part of that. And what I'm doing is I'm closing one eye, and it's for me it's always my right eye. And I'm, with my hand outstretched, I'm putting my finger on where the bottle ends from left to right. And the tip of the measuring tool, it could be a pencil or your nice long vine charcoal, is resting on the opposite side of it, okay? So that's the measurement of the widest part of the bottle. If you have your eyes open, it kind of makes it sort of like a little, it's very difficult to see what's happening if you have both eyes open. But if you have one eye open, and the book talks about this, like it's a scientific optical situation. So this allows you to get a little more clarity. So one eye open, one eye closed. And I'm gonna take that measurement, that's the width of the box. And I'm gonna compare it to the height of the object. And the width of the bottle goes into the height of the bottle about two times. So I'm gonna sort of rest my finger at the top and then bring that measuring tool up. The bottle itself is just slightly taller than two widths. So since I've done that work there, now I can translate that measurement. 
So the width of the bottle, if it's truly this wide, and remember I think we said that it was these marks here we're representing a little bit more. If this is that wide, then one, two, well, remember through my viewfinder I was seeing that the top of it was going off the page. So that tells me that this measurement is too wide, or too tall rather, for the width. So I'm going to go back again and see what's going on. And now as I look through my viewfinder again, I'm seeing, you know what, I probably don't have quite enough space on either side here. And I probably have too much space down here at the bottom. So I'm going to move that up and then allow that to go off the page. And I'm just going to soften that up a little bit. So we have these construction lines that are left over from drawing and wiping things out. This is actually going to go all the way off, he said. And those are okay. Like, you'll notice that your drawing kind of gets like a hazy, cloudy effect to it after a while. And it, it's actually kind of a nice sort of thing that happens. Okay, so now I'm pretty happy with this. I think it's a little closer to reality, maybe slightly wider. I'm going to measure the whole um, jug. And I'm going to include the handle, okay, because it's part of it. So we're talking about the outermost dimensions. You might have an object that has a spout or a handle. Make the box so that it fits in the box, not so that just the main body of it fits in the box. And what you'll find that's a really strange about this object, it looks like it's taller than it is wide, but if you include the width of the handle, the box is going to be almost square. And I'm just checking that based on my memory of this friend. And it's true, the box is almost square. But if I drop a straight line down from the spout on the right-hand side, my right-hand side, I see that it actually interferes with this guy a little bit. It comes over into uh, the bottle. So I'm going to make this box a little bit bigger. I'm going to drop a box on it. It's just about square. And I'm lining my viewfinder up again. And I'm seeing it's actually a little more like this further away from the edge. I'm going to wipe this friend out a little bit. So you can see, it's, it's a slow process and that's a good thing. The slower you go, the more accurate your drawing is going to be. And there are various stages that you want to stop and check and are really important to accuracy in the picture. So I just measured the orange, just top to bottom on sort of a central axis. And I got that the orange is about half of the height of this box. So I was guessing earlier, but I was kind of right on with the guess. It is about that height. And the orange is pretty round. If I measure the height versus the width, it's very similar. It's not a perfect sphere, but it's, it's very similar. Then what I'm going to do is something kind of funny. We're going to talk about, uh, in another video, Seth is going to talk about uh, negative, positive relationships, positive, negative space. I'm now going to measure the negative space. I'm going to measure the space between these two objects. Okay, So it's not just the positive objects that you want to measure. It's also the space around them. Because it's all going to give us sort of the full picture of perception. So I'm going to measure the space between the bottle and the orange. And what I get is just a little, the space here is just a slightly bit bigger than half of the orange. So if I divide that orange in half, I'll get that measurement. I can compare it there. And look at that. It's just slightly bigger than half the orange. So we're in good shape. Like, so far, you know, it's developing pretty well. Then I'm going to put my viewfinder down here again in that corner. I'm going to make sure that it makes sense where things kind of are to each other. This box needs to be brought down. So I'm going to bring that box down a little bit. We talked about the intuitive perspective measuring of angles earlier. 
with the edges of the table, which is sort of the first step in making one of these drawings. The other thing that you can measure with intuitive perspective is an angle between one object and another. So now I'm going to go ahead and check my measurements in that way, make sure my relationships are looking good. So I'm going to measure, I'm going to rest my tool, just like I was measuring, you know, one eye closed, and for me it's my right eye, right eye, right hand. I measured the intuitive perspective of the tabletop angle before. Now I'm going to measure the relationship between the objects by resting my measuring tool on the bottom of two objects. So I've got, I'm basically like drawing a line between this orange and the bottom of that bottle. Whoa. Just pretend that didn't happen. Maybe we can edit that out. I'm basically going to draw a line between this friend and this friend, okay? And then I'm going to see if it makes sense for my drawing. So if I rest my tool, close one eye, on the bottom of the orange and also on the bottom of the bottle, and then I pivot, it's just about straight across. So we're pretty close there. It looks pretty good. I can do the same thing with the bottle. And right now I'm gonna, I wanna make this object symmetrical, so I'm going to draw a line down the middle so I can later in the picture compare halves. I'm gonna do the same thing with this jug. Because aside from its handle and its spout, it is a symmetrical object, like just the vessel itself. If we pop off the, the um, spout and the handle, it's a symmetrical object. Okay. So I'm going to go from the middle of this friend to the middle of this friend. Just kind of think about drawing a line down the middle of that jug and trying to get to the middle of the bottle. And I'm going to check that angle. And it looks pretty close. So we're in good shape. This is a good place to stop. See you shortly to talk a little bit more about perceptual system, proportional systems and ellipses.